yes, this is a rather hacky radio thing to do, but we do grades in all sports. And generally, in schools, specifically college, you're graded on a two-semester basis, right? There's the first semester. There's the second semester. For the Astros, there's the first half, even though the first half goes a little bit longer than the halfway mark of the year. And there's the second half. So you guys get to answer this right now. What would you grade the Astros' first half of the year? I'm going to start this by saying I hate, 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 hate how soft we've become as a country when it comes to grading things, specifically in sports. No one gets Fs anymore unless it's an absolute disaster. Ds don't get thrown out that much anymore either, even though Ds get degrees. For the most part, somebody who is underperforming is going to get a C- in 2024, as if that is a D now or an F. It's not. A C is satisfactory. C plus above satisfactory. B minus to B, kind of good. B plus, good. A minus, very good. A, great. A plus, perfect. We should be harsher as graders here in 2024. Otherwise, we're failing our children. But let's bring it back to the Houston Astros with the first half of the season done. What do they deserve as a grade? I'm going to give them a D. But Paul, they're only one game back in the AL West. They're four games above 500. But they still started 7 and 19, guys. They still had a really awful start to the year. I don't forget that. And the reason I don't forget that is because of a lesson that I learned in a law class that I took in college, the only law class I ever took. I was under the impression that if the teacher's telling me that I don't have to be there for every single class, that this is going to be one of those classes that's rather easy to pass. So I didn't really show up for any of my comm law classes. I remember the first day that we had an exam, taking the exam, thinking, I don't know if I did that well on it, but whatever. It's my senior year. This is a class that I don't think is ultimately all that important. The grades come back for this test. We're all sitting in the classroom and the teacher writes the high score for the test on the board and the low score for the test on the board. I see the low score, 37. And I think to myself, who's the dumbass that got this? So I'm waiting for my test to get handed back to me. My test is handed back. I got the 37. I had the lowest grade in the class on the exam. And I was so embarrassed because I was of the mindset that I could never do worse than a D if I put no effort into it all at all. <laughs> and I got the worst grade in the class. And that bad start that I had on my first exam ended up costing me. I did well on my next two exams. I got B's on both of them. But because I had the 37 to open up the year, my average was a D. I found out at the very end of the semester that a D does, in fact, get a degree. I wasn't 100% sure that that was the case. And I passed the class. But it's the lowest grade I've ever gotten in my life. And we have high standards here. The Houston Astros should never be starting off 7-19. and 19. They shouldn't. I get it. Injuries. Specifically with the pitchers. But a 7-19 and 19 start is like me getting a 37 on my test. You know? Brilliant mind like me getting a 37 doesn't seem possible. Houston Astros starting off 7-19 and doesn't seem possible. They've overcome it, sure, but for the first half of the year, the Astros get a D. They should be in first place right now. They should. I, I agree with you where it, it is the situation with how they've played recently is um, A-worthy, honestly. How they've played since, uh, since getting rid of Jose Abreu, if you want to be mean, or... <laughs> the start of June, if you want to be nice, uh, that that has been a that has been Paul the second two uh, exams in the was it media law class, uh, but the problem is you do have to count the first. You half. have to count the first test. And this is this is where 
this is this is where I maybe I'm drawing from my personal experience, one personal experience that I had. Where hey, listen, really really messed up the first part of the year, got it back on track. Like you're saying, probably adds adds up. We're looking at a 70, 72 or something in, in that range, a D. But I, you know, the Astros are a good kid. I like them. Bump them up to a C minus. But you're going to write something on the progress report about yeah. how they could have done a little bit better. Yes, yes. But but because of the, the track record that they have, I'm more inclined to believe that this second half, uh, the second, this the last month and a half, I was going to say the second half of the first half, the last six weeks is more indicative of who this team is than the first six weeks. So in, in that case, I am giving them a little bit of the benefit of the doubt and bumping them up to a C-. minus. Unbelievable. They're a good kid. What can I say? You're the reason. I, w- I want to see them walk at graduation. You're the reason America's failing. Yeah. You know? As, as as I've said a couple of times before, like this is this is why you'll never be a great father. You need to <laughs> thank you. You need to. I, I, I always love it when you drop that on. You me. need to emotionally abuse your children, right? Like yeah. you need to make them think that perfection is the only way. You need to make them still recoil in shame at the idea that they once got a thirty-seven in their life, right? Did my parents do that? No comment. What I am going to say is that that D. Hurts. It's something that I still remember. It's in the back of my mind. Should be in the back of the Houston Astros' mind. Uh, we got a comment here <laughs> on uh, on the Twitch. Uh, Pinche says, "Quit whining, Paul. We're going to kick ass after the All Star break." I hope so. What I will say about the second half of the year, I think we're going to learn everything about this Astros team and how good they are over the next forty one games or so because they play all of the good teams that they will the remainder of the way over that forty one game stretch. They have a really nice September, so if they don't do so hot in late July and August, there's a chance they'd actually be able to make up some of the ground in September. But to open up the month, the Mariners, they have the Dodgers, the Rays, Rangers, okay, you got 12 games against them. Maybe you don't think those are that tough, but I think we just saw from the Rangers, the Rangers are not a pushover for the Astros in in 2024, at least right now. You got the Red Sox, who have randomly been very good this season. Six games against them. Four games in Baltimore against the Orioles. Three against the Phillies. Four more against the Kansas City Royals. You got a pretty difficult stretch to open up the second half of the year. And while you've been playing a lot better of late and you're one game out in the AL West and the Mariners seem to be doing everything they can to give you the American League West, it's going to be tough. So we'll see what happens. I'm giving them a D for the first half of the year. I like the way that they finished it, no doubt about it, but you can't erase the 37 that they got, much like Paul Gallant got back in 2010 in his communications law class. Here's the thing. Why would why would I need to know anything about comm law? I'm going to hire a lawyer, Right. If they get sued for libel or slander, what, am I going to defend myself? Like That was what I thought when I was in the class. I'm like, I'm going to hire a lawyer. Why do I need to know comm law? Why do I need to know communications law? I think it's to keep you from hire, having to hire a lawyer. Mm. <laughs> save you save you a little bit of money by not being slanderous or libel, libelous. But it's but, fun to be slanderous and libelous. But what as long they, as you say you're kidding. But what they do, yes, exactly. What they don't know, see, the, Paul, here, they're teaching that to the... Because I took a media law class. It's the only class that I ever had to take that was at 8 a.m. Because they only offered it once a semester at 8 a.m. Because they just want to make your life miserable. That's that's yeah. the reason for the class exists. And what it is, is they're doing that for the people that are going to go into you know TV, go into written journalism. Over here... Sports talk radio. Oh yeah, we got different rules. Yeah, we got different rules. All right. Honestly, like we didn't need a degree to get this job. We just have to talk out of our ass and be That's, somewhat entertaining doing yes. it. I gave the Astros first half of the season a D, but if we were to grade the individual parts of the Astros first half, how would we grade them? I feel like the bats. You got to give them a B. The issue is really the runners in scoring position issue, the left on base issue. But, I mean, think about this. They averaged 5.4 runs a game and 9.3 hits over the 35 games that they've been without Kyle Tucker. They've scored at least six runs 15 times without Kyle Tucker this year. Of late, the offense has really been looking good. And, yeah, they're missing a guy who looked like he was 
the Astros' leading MVP candidate. They've been without him for a very long time. I can't believe it's been this long. It does seem like things are trending in the right direction. So I will give the Astros' bats a B. The pitching is really tricky because there's so many extenuating circumstances. They've already used 29 pitchers over 96 games. They set a franchise record with 32 three years ago. They're already at 29. I mean, if Luis Garcia and Lance McCullers pitch at all this year, I mean, you're just one person shy of the record. Yeah, and you're at the all-star break. Right yeah. Now. That, it's, that's wild because normally, you know, later in the season that you'll even get an extra arm here or there where you're like, where's this guy from? Mm -hmm. That's not even to mention they might make a move for an arm at the deadline beyond getting back uh, uh, Garcia and McCullough. So if they trade for someone, that person, if they throw They're going to break the record. Yeah, they're, it's it would be very unlikely for them not to break the record. Honestly, if they don't break the record, part of it's probably because Lance McCullough did not come back, which speaks to the issue. If this continues, I feel like the starting pitching also gets a B. Did you expect this out of Ronel Blanco? No. Did you expect Hunter Brown to get things together after the way he started off this year? No. Did you expect Spencer Aragetti to regularly pitch well enough? No. You were thinking Christian Javier was going to bounce back from last season. You were hoping Framber Valdez would bounce back from last year. But Javier, he gets hurt. Verlander has barely pitched this season as well. And yet you are still making it work with a four-man rotation that's held together by duct tape and rubber bands and gum. I'm giving the starting pitching a B. Yeah, the the injury aspect is, is what's hard to, I guess, quantify in the grades if, if you're throwing it out, if you're getting them extra credit for overcoming the injuries. Because, like you said, Hunter Brown has really stepped up as of late, he's kind of been a microcosm of the Astros' season yeah. in, in itself of absolute abject disaster to start. And he's worked himself back into being pretty much what we thought or what some Astros, uh, what the Astros' uh, front office and what some Astros' fans thought he could be from the start, uh, honestly, from the start of last season. But right. he's he's kind of delivering on some of the potential uh, that we we're told about uh, when he was a prospect. So uh, it is it is a, a tough grade to give because even someone like Spencer Arigetti, you know, if it was individual, it's like, yeah, he's he's been good, but he's been up and down. Some, some starts have been really bad, but at a certain point, he didn't think he was going to have to pitch no. this much. He Probably shouldn't not. be in a position where he's pitching as much as he is. So... It, it is something where, as a whole, I don't think that the starting pitching, for parts of this year, I, I think starting pitcher was the problem for the Astros. But a lot of that's just out of their control. It is yeah. guys being hurt or guys like Eric Getty, like Hunter Brown, b being thrust in position, <laughs> like Jake Bloss, like Blair Henley, uh, getting thrust in a position that they shouldn't be in. Exactly. So, starting pitching, I'm giving that a B. Bullpen, D. Yeah. Josh Hader has been... Very disappointing. I don't think you can mince words about it. You are paying him to be close to automatic. He has been far from that. Ryan Pres Presley has pitched a lot better recently, so that makes you feel better. But even Brian Abreu this year has not seemed like the Brian Abreu of last year. Rafael Montero. Excuse me. Rafael Montero. I, I always get my Rafael's <laughs> yeah. twisted. And Rafael. Because yeah. uh, that's Rafael Stone. No, Rafael Stone trending up. Yeah. Rafael Montero, get off my roster. I mean, he gave up another home run over the weekend. Eight home runs allowed. It's like the most of any Astros pitcher, I think. Any Astros reliever. Every time he comes into the game, you're like, what the hell? And I get why a lot of people yesterday were second-guessing why Joe Espada would put Montero in in that spot. And his reasoning was, well, if we're not up by one run, we don't want to use Hayter or Abreu or, or Presley. Why do you want to use Montero at all? Can you just dump him? Can you just dump him? You did it with Jose Abreu. Is it really going to be so hard to get rid of two guys in one year? Yeah. That are making way too much money. And maybe it is, but come on. He is unusable in crunch situations. You might be tied for first place right now. And if not for some of the other uh, just pants poopages by your bullpen, you might be in first place right now. D. 
easily a D. There's been some nice performances. Taylor Scott, he's been fun. Seth Martinez, he's done pretty well. Like, there's a lot of guys that have come in there and done a pretty good job considering we had very low expectations and we're thinking to ourselves, they let Hector Nearest go? Why? The bullpen doesn't have enough depth. But the guys that you were expecting to be dominant have all had stretches this year where you've been like, oh, what's going on? Presley, Abreu, and Josh Hader. And then you throw in Rafael Montero. Rafael Montero, the Rafael Montero show on top of all of it. Ooh, uh, D. Yeah. Taylor Scott, though. I just want to single out Taylor Scott. You've been good. Yeah. I like it. I, Taylor I like, Scott has been good. I like what we've gotten out of Taylor Scott. And I like what we've gotten as of late from Presley. And for, to a certain uh, extent, Hater too. Hater, Hater is weird because it feels like when it's tied, he gives up a home run. When it when it's a save situation, he's got it. <laughs> it is a very weird situation. He hasn't blown very many saves. It's just it, he just hasn't been like a lights out pitcher. I hate though that when you say that, even if it is a fact, I hate that that gets used by some of the baseball experts out there as confirmation bias that he shouldn't be used in situations. Oh no, I'm not. Where it's not the close. I'm not saying that. I'm I'm just. Saying I know you're not. That th- he's been kind of bipolar in in the way his production's been, where it, it seems like. He just really loves closing. I don't know. I don't know what to tell you. I I don't either. Uh, From a managing perspective, people were looking at someone to get mad at for the first half of the year. They focused on Joe Espada. Joe Espada doesn't hit. Joe Espada doesn't pitch. Joe Espada manages the lineup on a day-to-day basis, probably something that is told, um, Dictated to him by Dana Brown and, and everyone in the front office. So I don't, I don't even know how much criticism you give him for lineup construction on the same level that we all, some of you people, bitched and moaned about Dusty Baker on a daily basis. I didn't because I was lazy. But then eventually it just got annoying. You guys are always going to bitch about the manager here. Always have, as it is. So Joe Espada was going to get blamed for a lot of the first half issues. But since his two critical speeches, the speech after getting swept by the Cubs, the two-game series in Mexico City, it's opening day. Forgot about that. They're 41 and 27 since then. And after losing to the White Sox, two to nothing, he said, hey, let's get back to 500. They've done both. They've, they've, uh, they've done pretty well since both of those moments. Crossroads moments for Joe Espada. Yeah. I think Joe Espada, I'll give him a C-. minus. Just because all of you guys are complaining about him all the time. And he's not Papa. He's not Dusty Baker. But, I mean, it hasn't been that bad. Yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know how to grade a, what a manager has done in half a season. Because, like you said, at a certain point, it's like, well. So he made all the bad decisions when they're losing. But then when they're winning, he's not making the right decisions. Mm-hmm. Like, like I just, uh, how, do, how does that exactly. coincide? Like, I feel like if you're going to blame him for making bad decisions, you should give him credit for making the right ones. Exactly. Especially and as a rookie manager. Clearly, he did not want Jose Abreu to play. Clearly. Uh, YouTube Keith asks, what grade would you give Jeff Bagwell? Jeff Bagwell, we have sent him to Juvie. We've, we've said this, yeah. I think, before when we've been talking about grading for Jeff Bagwell. <laughs> at, well, it's suspended. It's suspended from school. You, you know, it's it's one thing to uh, smoke cigarettes on school property slash sign Rafael Montero to that ridiculous deal. But it, it's it's another thing entirely to be uh, rolling up a J and giving Jose Abreu that deal, too, at, at, on campus, okay? It's just too much chain smoking by Jeff Bagwell on campus. Listen, he can figure it out. You just yeah. got to stay off my campus and figure it out somewhere else. Yeah. Second chance in life. Just not here. Not, not we're here. not running second chance you over here. This is not last chance you. Or last Correct. chance you. Yeah. <laughs> we're not doing that. Yeah. 